like I love the idea of this with just a simple white t-shirt and black gloves and dog boots you know just really turning the glamour on its head which I think Carl did so well he really juxtaposed things and I think that was such a big part of the DNA when he was at the house he really looked at what was on the street he looked at you know what the it girls were doing and and used them as his muses This is Faye, welcome back to my channel. Here we have a space that is all about being thrifty, having an opulence mindset. So really diving into our creativity, our imagination, and making the best out of what is already in existence. I'm dressed a little bit differently today, and 10 points if you can guess as who because I want to talk about designer DNA. By that, I mean the details of Dior, the feel of Fendi, and what's the vibe of Versace. So clearly today, I want to talk about Chanel, specifically Karl Lagerfeld. So obviously Chanel was created by Coco Chanel, way back in the 1920s and she was such a champion for paving a new way for women. This was a time when women were restricted not only by what they wore but by what they could do. They weren't allowed to vote, they couldn't drive, simple things that we take for granted today. Coco Chanel really championed a different, more progressive way for women to dress. They were used to being bound in corseting and, you know, restrictive clothing. But Coco was all about women in pants, striped Breton tops, a classic black jacket, pearls, and of course her signature camellia. So when you think of Chanel today, what do you think of? I think of the classic padded leather, the chain strap, the CC, I think of striped shirts, I think of the boucle or the tweed, that really kind of elevated material, textured material. Sometimes it even has gold thread or silver thread through it. I definitely think of the pearls, I think of the camellias, and then I think of that very classic but decadent, you know, the classic black jacket, as I say, is such a staple for me. And putting together this look today, I really tapped into Carl. So Carl took over Chanel in the 1980s. Coco had passed away a decade prior and the brand was kind of considered almost passed away as well. It just had really lost its essence, it's lost its vibe. And when Carl stepped into the role and then particularly into the couture in 1983, he totally revamped it. And I think in his time, he took such a modern and interesting approach, but never, never sort of turned away from those classic pieces that make Chanel, that DNA that we're talking about. So putting together this look today was really easy because these are just all classic pieces, simple items that I have in my wardrobe and my husband's wardrobe, but just with that little dash of Carl. So it's just a simple white button down that I found from the Salvos. This is all from the Salvos, so it's secondhand, it's thrifted. I've added my husband's work tie. I've got this beautiful brooch. When I was with my dad in Thailand, it's not real, but nobody needs to know right and then this jacket I've had for ages it's got beautiful gold button detailing adding you know making sure that the sleeves are popping out and then of course some classic Carl shades if you really wanted to go next level put your hair back in a bun add some fingerless gloves add even more rings and you've got that Carl aesthetic but the reason I want to focus on the DNA of Chanel when Carl was at the helm. He passed away in 2019. But when Carl was at the helm, he also worked with other brands like Fendi and Chloe. But when he was in charge of Chanel, he really took 
the classic and merged it with the modern and what was happening in the zeitgeist and in the collective. And I think it's genius. And to this day, it's really, really branded and really tapped into that DNA of Chanel. The reason I chose Carl and the House of Chanel for the first episode of this designer DNA series that I would love to tap into with you is because he passed away in 2019 and this year's Met Gala is dedicated to Carl. So this year's Met exhibition and Met Gala, as I say, is dedicated to Carl Lagerfeld and it's called A Line of Beauty. And I think what the creative director, Andrew Bolton, does brilliantly is that he really taps into that DNA, to that personality of the theme, and in this case, of the iconic Karl Lagerfeld. Ironically, Karl always said that he never thought fashion should be in a museum. He said it should be on the street, on people, in motion, real life. And he didn't like looking back at the past, as you could see in a lot of his collections. He was really either tapping into a different time or what was happening in that current mo moment and making it really relevant and cool, juxtaposed with those classic pieces. So the reason the Met exhibition is called A Lion of Beauty is because it's focusing on Karl Lagerfeld's sketches. He sketched everything. He sketched all the time. And it was the way that the premiers would interpret his sketches and then would make the clothing. So the sketches were the integral part of the DNA of Chanel under the realm of Karl. And so what you will see at the exhibition is this combination of the sketch, and then the garment over different eras and different years coming to life, which I think is so beautiful. And it really taps into what I'm talking about here, which is the DNA. So the DNA for the brand is really about that idea development and that creativity and that expression. So I thought we could look at a couple of my favorite Chanel collections, talk about the DNA in that, and also how Carl really masterfully took that classic timeless DNA and made it so unique and current and interesting collection after collection. I mean, honestly, every Chanel collection that Carl did, I think is genius. So it was really hard to pick. But the first one that I want to talk about because I go back to it time and time again, was the 20, one of the 2011 collections and it was called Paris Bombay. And it was this beautiful merging of the last days of Raj in India, coupled with this decadent Parisian chic. So the whole runway was literally like this British, but also French, Indian high tea. So the whole runway had like, you know, decadent, crockery with cakes and goblets and what I loved about what the models were wearing was it was this perfect blend of that more Raj, you know, the very textured, detailed embroidery and then the girls had dreadlocks. They had like full kind of, you know, big buns on their head that were all dreads and the fact that he thought to do that and like juxtapose that it's just such beautiful storytelling. But when you looked at that runway, you could still tell that it was Chanel. You could tell by the shoes, you could tell by the bags, you could tell by the fabrics, you could tell by that DNA. And the reason that I really focus on the DNA when I'm thrifting is because it really helps me to find these designer inspired pieces because I know what Chanel looks like despite each collection being different and having a slightly varied expression there's things that don't change, like the pieces that I'm wearing. So really try that when you are thinking about thrifting an outfit or thrifting a look or trying to elevate your thrift game. Look at the collections, look at the designers, look at the DNA of it, and it will be a game changer. As you can see, it's just so decadent. But it really gets me thinking time and time again, whenever I see an embroidered piece or 
you know, I put my hair up in a messy, messy bun. It kind of takes me to that time. It makes me think of that show. And then it makes me think, how could I create something like it? And I actually did a photo shoot many years ago with a friend of mine. She very kindly modeled for me. You can see it here. And we used everything secondhand, thrifted from salvos. You know, something super simple that you can do is just a white t-shirt, layer a bunch of pearls, put on a black jacket and jeans and heels and you're good to go. Fall 2016 Haute Couture was another Carl show for Chanel that just got deep into my fashion soul. And the reason for this is because it's a complete 360 from the show that I just showed you, which was all out decadence. I'm pretty sure that was the metier d'art, which is the couture and when it shows all of the, you know, the artisan work with the beading and the feathering. But this show was stripped right back. It was in the Chanel Atelier. So where all the petits mons, which are, I believe means little hands, the hands that are doing all of the important stitching work in couture, because couture is completely handmade. There is no machine used, everything is hand stitched. So this show was to really honor the workers, the artisans that are creating these beautiful decadent luxury items. But the runway show was so stripped back. You could see the sketches, you could see the rolls of fabric, you could see, you know, the scissors and the tape measures and the thread, which of course is still very much the DNA, the DNA of the house, you know, it's all of those little hands that are making these incredible pieces that we see going down the runway and we see on street style, we see on celebrities. But for me, you know, a big reason I wrote my book, Op Chopulence, was to tap us into that. And just because we can't afford couture, it doesn't mean that we can create, we can't create thrift couture. You know, we can embellish things with brooches, we can add ornate silk scarves, we can, you know, wear great accessories, we can wear bold earrings and fabulous dark sunglasses or fingerless gloves like Carl. There's all these little elements that we can tap into. I mean, look at this divine piece, beautiful like sequins and beading, any kind of like ball gown, wedding dress, is unlimited for me. I love to think about how I could reinvent it and if you follow me on social media you, you would have seen that before. I'm always tapping into what I see on the runway like McQueen and Chanel and Dior and how I can recreate it. So I love the idea of things like this with biker boots and a suit jacket or a leather biker jacket. This skirt is so heavy but it's incredible. Like I love the idea of this with just a simple white t-shirt and black gloves and dog boots. You know, just really turning the glamour on its head, which I think Carl did so well. He really juxtaposed things, and I think that was such a big part of the DNA when he was at the house. He really looked at what was on the street. He looked at, you know, what the it girls were doing and, and used them as his muses to really help him tap into that zeitgeist and that collective mindset, utilizing the classic pieces, but then making it current, making it now, and moving forward, moving into the future, and having something different to say every time. And I think this is why thrift is so amazing, because it's not fed to you. You can't just go in there and see an outfit on a mannequin and take it away like you can on the high street or in fast fashion. You do have to think about it, you do have to be creative. And getting to know the DNA for me, game changer. Let's go have a quick run around this store and see what Chanel inspired pieces we can find. So the first place I want to go is to the men's section. This is pretty much where I head a lot of the time. But my reason for this is, okay, let's hone in on some black jackets because that's such a staple of the Chanel DNA. And here we go. Here's a really beautiful one, really nice quality. See here, look at all these great suiting textures that we could use. This one is really cool, it's got little diamantes. Obviously, she's ended up in the men's section, but that's gorgeous. Little matching top. But I think pieces like this are definitely kind of more in the Chanel vein. 
always look in the shirts too just to find yourself a white collared shirt Carl was always in that that was such a uniform for him I think it was you know partly to kind of let the clothes speak but interestingly enough he became his own DNA his own character having a look in the women's skirts and this definitely the 10 bucks gives me a Chanel feel the brand always has this DNA of beautiful details and I think this is a really nice detail so let's add that in to our little collection here albeit teeny tiny these have some really beautiful button detailing and very slim line I think they would look great in our little Chanel collection I really like the oversized slouchy nature of this I think they would look amazing with brogues and then the white button down and the tie and the suit jacket maybe even a little black hat I think these two little hats are really cool maybe switch out the trimming or I could put a camellia on the side of that and that one could be good too even the straw ones like this black one could be interesting well, this definitely has that feel see look at all these pearls if you just put all of them together stack them over each other that would look incredible there's more here some interesting pieces here Ooh, that even looks like a CC if you look at that the CC logo so does that bracelet in a way here's a crazy idea but what if you actually use these earrings and stuck them together with a glue gun to create a CC then you could put a little brooch back on it Oh my god, that's such a good idea. I'm gonna try. And look at this. This definitely has the Chanel boucle tweed situation. She's $30. It's definitely got that feel. And I love the idea of it with a white t shirt underneath, some black kind of faded jeans and boots. And then a little black like padded Chanel bag, inspired bag, with a chain strap. That's a really good example. Look at these incredible shoes. Oh my gosh, the details, the drama, the pearls. They are so Chanel. And I love the idea of juxtaposing them with ripped denim and a black jacket and a white shirt and a tie like what I've got on today. I think that would look super cool. Quite a few gorgeous shoes here. These are pretty fab too. Oof, look at these ones. My lord. Wow. Not quite Chanel, but this is definitely the DNA of someone else. I love this for maybe like an off-white look. Okay, just added a few base pieces shoes as well this skirt is from the wedding section but I love the idea of wearing it with a t-shirt and maybe those biker boots but then this Chanel tweed inspired boucle jacket I've added my little brooch to give us the feels to tap into the DNA white button down some great classic black pants with some cool button detailing this pleated skirt with some gorgeous ruffle trim love these oversized pants I think they'll look really cool with either heels or the dog boots or you could even go some brogues and then a classic black jacket from the men's section these are all pieces that would work really well in anybody's wardrobe and then as Carl always did you could take that base DNA and then add your own flavor your own feel your own source whether it be a rock t-shirt or some beat up denim or a pencil skirt if you're more of a corporate person you know just really play but when you have the base pieces and the DNA of a, of a fashion house the 
world is your oysters, my love? I hope that you found this concept of designer DNA interesting. And let me know what designer DNA you would like me to tap into next. And definitely give it a go when you are thrifting. Have a think about a designer that you're really gravitating towards or an aesthetic that you're really liking. Even, you know, like it could be a subculture, the DNA of a subculture like punk uh, or buffalo or, you know, disco. Like think about what's the DNA of that. And the more that you educate yourself, the more that you can create these gorgeous thrift inspired ensembles for less. So thank you very much for watching my loves. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Diving into the DNA of designers, the DNA of Chanel and Karl Lagerfeld. And I will definitely do something else about the Met Gala leading up to it in May. I'm also creating a really exciting runway show, all thrifted, inspired by fashion weeks of the past, really tapping into that DNA of different designers. So I'll be looking at Chanel and I definitely want to dedicate the runway aesthetic to the show that I just spoke about, the 2016 Fall Haute Couture. And then I want to look at other designers like Balmain, Dior, Mugler, and just see all of the amazing thrift odes that I can create. So I'll definitely take you on the journey of that and behind the scenes of that as well. But yeah, do let me know if you like the idea of this designer DNA and if you would like to dive into it a little bit further here on my channel. All right, loves, I will see you really soon for the next one. Mwah.